but as many of us, I just grew up in one of them casual homes where, you know, it, you never really went to church. You kind of believed there was something out there, but you went and you, you really just worshiped your own agenda. So growing up, I had always just figured, you know, it was all about me and what I wanted to do sports and, uh, you know, really into mathematics. That was my thing. A couple of few grades ahead in mathematics and things like that. So I was known as, you know, popular and intelligent. So no surprise, uh, you know, I would stem that way. I would start using marijuana, but this is how it happened. Let me, let me point back. Some of you, you need to go backwards to resolve this situation in your life. And for me, it started when my parents got divorced. I was the last one I would say that was going to smoke any marijuana because I just didn't feel like I needed it. I grew up, I had asthma problems, breathing problems as it was. And the last thing I want to do was start smoking marijuana. It was the last thing I needed in my life. But when my parents got divorced, when every the family got broken up, I I I leaned in that direction. And when we start smoking marijuana, we never think I'm going to smoke this stuff every day for the next 10 years for the next 20 years. You always dabble into it just a little bit. You say, I want to get into it. I just want to try it. Now, this is how the enemy works in this area. He always draws you in with a little bit of curiosity. You, you can remember back to that time and you thought, I'm just going to try it. It's not that big a deal. You know, I'll probably move on with my life. I'll be able to control it. So when I started to dabble into it, and I was thinking about this today, you always think, okay, you smoked one time. Wasn't that big a deal. A week goes by, you, you, you're not doing it again. And then boom, one more time. But then the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth time goes by. And next thing you know, you're smoking all day long. This is exactly how it happened for me that I, it was just once then, you know, what a big deal to try it again. But by the time the third, fourth time came around, we were smoking all day long. I'm not saying that, Oh, I'm, I used to actually pick on people that were smoking bowls and hitters and things like that because we were smoking 10, 20 blunts a day, rolling around. We never went anywhere without a quarter pound of weed. And somebody would literally roll blunts all day long as we're going here, going there. And this is just the beginning. So at this point, you know, I'm, I'm full blown into the thing that I said I was never going to do. And we're rolling around. There's the three of us, three friends. Of course, there's always others that are encouraging you to do these things. So, you know, my family gets, you know, broken up. Everything I thought I knew is a mess. And I figure to cover up this pain or trauma in my life, I'm just going to start smoking. And that will dull me down enough. That'll calm down any anxiety or any problems in my life. I can mask it. Now, marijuana is used as a mask in our lives to mask our problems so that we don't that have to really deal with it. You were taking it. Were you kind of like consciously like acknowledging that, hey, I don't want to deal with this. I just want to smoke weed. Or did you think it was like just fun and other things like that? That was a conscious decision on your end to cope. Yeah, to an extent. Now. Growing up popular, so to speak, you want to do what's popular at the time. You go with the culture. So here we are. We're listening to rap music, and I never understood the spiritual repercussions of listening to music, how it actually yeah. influences us in a type yeah. of way. Some of you, you're listening right now. You you never used to act like that until you began to listen to that music. So we're listening to the hardest trap music out there. Gucci Man's popular at the time. Oh, I'm yeah. having parties at the house. We're packing out the house, 100 people in an apartment. We're listening to trap music, doing the whole thing. And I never drank either. So I thought, well, if I'm not drinking, then it's okay if I smoke marijuana. And I carried this uh, theology, so to speak, ideology, for about 10, 15 years until the Lord touched my life. I always thought in my mind, well, I see what happens when people drink. 
And it's not as bad if you smoke weed. So if it helps me not do everything else, but what I didn't realize is that marijuana would open me up to all this other stuff. You know, you start taking pills. You never just smoke weed. And my wife used to always tell me this. Nobody just smokes weed and doesn't sell a little bit to their friends. So not only did I get in and thinking, I'm just going to smoke a little weed. Next thing you know, you're taking a little bit of pills. You're selling a little bit to your friend to make it a little bit cheaper for you. So here I am. I'm yeah. living at my buddy's apartment now. And that's where I'm at in my life. We're smoking weed all day long. Well, uh, Xanax here or there. What's the big deal? You know, you drink every so often. We're having parties. And next thing you know, you, your life, what you thought that you knew is is thrown away and now you're in this it's almost like a snowball going down a hill you just keep doing it like i said i'm listening to the music now i'm living that lifestyle selling it uh smoking it all day long getting money wrapped up into it all these different things did you so grow I up care in church? did you have any like relationship with church with christians that you knew how was that like dichotomy okay so my brother got touched by the Lord. The Lord spoke audibly to him when he put him in a pinch that he wasn't going to follow him anymore unless God spoke to him audibly. God hit him, spoke audibly to him, called him, and he would tell me a little bit about Jesus, but there was no tangible proof. Now, I had been to a few Christmas services, you know, the Easter services, things like that. But there was no real signs of God's existence and that because I'm mathematical. I'm, sci you know, science and yep, math yep. are my thing. So if I can't find anything tangible to grab hold of, I'm not riding with any of this. You know, yep. I'm looking for a manifestation here. And that's what I was looking at with using marijuana, at least the repercussions of the side effects to smoking marijuana was less than drinking alcohol. And while everyone's drinking alcohol, if I'm just smoking Hey, I'm doing better than them, right? So I'm looking, there's no evidence that God truly exists. And my brother never came in and told me this or that, or, you know, it wasn't until I seen the demons were real that I knew God was real, that I knew the name of Jesus carried power. Now, he, yeah. this is how, this is how deep I go into things that God is real. But what about this Jesus guy? You know, God says in the Old Testament, don't follow another God. Don't follow anyone else. How do I know Jesus was really a man wrapped in? He's God comes in, wraps himself. In, how do I know all that? Boom. It was when D I started to see demons are driven out by the name of Jesus that I even knew that Jesus was a legitimate, was legitimate, legitimately God and that we we're supposed to follow him. I didn't know any of that. So it was far off for, for me to have any uh, spiritual truth in my life. It just wasn't there. It was non-existent. I was raised uh, selling tickets in front of stadiums. Uh, we would get golf balls out the creek. I'm, I'm selling those on eBay. So really my life is like an entrepreneur, businessman. How do we make the next dollar? What's the next business? How am I going to advance myself in the world? So it's all it was all just generated on how am I going to exalt myself in this world? So that's what that's where this marijuana thing came from was, well, if it uh, makes me appeal or look cool, then I want to do it. You know, if it draws women or draws this or draws popularity, then I want to do it. And right now we see a movement that has swept those people yeah. that I, that would never, I used to be, I'll be honest, I'll, we'll just get honest here. I used to be the only one in those schools that would even wear, uh, like Jordan shoes or like Nike shoes. I'm off in the cornfields, off in the country. Now, if you don't wear those, you're not cool. So I was, I was like almost a forerunner in this movement of where hip hop and rap music began to get super popular and began to sweep across this nation and now it's a regular that used to be that was the bad kids that would smoke weed or sell the weed and everyone kind of knew about me and my buddy in the town but now it's now it's such a regular thing that you're not cool and unless you're smoking weed 
So mm -hmm. I kind of seen this for, I was kind of forerunning this thing and I seen the people four or five years younger than me coming in and it, it went from abnormal or unusual to the common practice. It was typical. It was usual. No big deal. You never even blinked an eye. You know, kids are smoking on a lunch break. I used to be the only one. Now you see it. It's the typical thing. So I kind of oh, yeah. got to see it that, uh, that thing moved, but I can, I could tell that it was all influenced by the music, by the influencers, by Hollywood, you know, a behind the scenes kind of thing that swept in. So we're, we're like, we're really progressing with that. And the intention behind a lot of it was to make more money, to be popular, to be the cool guy. And it really filled the insecurity in my life, knowing that people were messaging me wanting more marijuana. It really filled that gap to know mm. that that they were going to message me and they were going to need me and they were going to this and we were going to get together and all smoke. It really fills that void in our life of, OK, I, I feel like they really need me. Guys, they don't want you. They're not even your friends. All they want to do is smoke that next sesh with you tomorrow night. And if it wasn't for that, they probably wouldn't even message you. I'm being honest here. I'm speaking to you in the name of the Lord. Guys, they would not be your friends. They wouldn't hit you up. They'd move on with their life. And uh, that's just that's just a that's just a truth, you yeah. know. Selfish world out here as I was. Wow, so man. yeah, we're we're, so we're you're progressing. dealing drugs. You're listening mm -hmm. to all this because I know exactly some people they don't necessarily get immersed in this stuff, you know, but like when you say that the music is filled with it, it actually is that like a majority of the reason you probably got into it. And a lot of people that age, when we're in high school, middle school, we want to be cool. We want to be, you know, mm -hmm. at, at the frontier of what's cool. You're listening to music. It's all about smoking blunts. It's all about smoking weed. It's all about doing drugs. It's all about partying. There's no more like Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers being played at parties like maybe our parents' generation. More wholesome songs just about, you know, romance, love, fun, whatever it is, life. It's literally about just completely heinous, sexual, drug-addicted, mm -hmm. murder, rage, crazy music when you really step back and look at it. That this yep. music is what's popular and it drives people into these things. People say, oh, you can't really get a demon from listening to music. No, but you can listen to their influence and it guides your life. You know, it guides your life in a specific direction. So that's basically what, what was happening to you and you were dealing it at a very high level. When did you start getting into kind of some of these new age things, the spiritual aspect? Because like, like me, I was very much more scientific, more logic, atheistic, mm -hmm. kind of based yep. all material world. Got to see it. It's got to be proven. Scientific method. When did you start kind of getting into more of the spiritual, the supernatural, seeing, okay, demons are for sure real. And because once you go there, then it's like, boom, you eventually realize Christ is the answer spiritually and that there's a lot more to this world than what many people grow up thinking. Yeah, so that was uh, about 15 to 16. In those couple of years, it was really the gangster rap lifestyle, you know, uh, sex, money, and drugs, the three basics, the three things that I was bound to. And I didn't even wreck. I, you don't even recognize at the time. So then it was about 17, 18, uh, through there. Then you started to see this festival hippie rave scene, start to move into the country. And I, you know, I'm the cool guy. So then I started to lean into that a little bit and it just happened to be the people I'm selling the weed to, okay, all of a sudden they're talking about different stuff. All of a sudden they need this type of drug, that type of drug. And I have access to, uh, you know, the, the MDMA, the Molly, yep. all them different stuff, the, the mints, which are pills that we used to take. I had access to this stuff through the cartel, uh, a piece of the cartel even was getting drugs from uh, the SD gang, which are satanic disciples, if you didn't know. There's a revelation there. And, Dude, the uh, guy so who I'm, actually I... invented MDMA, he lived in my hometown. So me and my friends who were into this stuff, and honestly, for like therapeutic, you think it's all, mm -hmm. you, you know, you read the studies about how it can help with different depression and stuff. 
but really you're taking it at raves. You're taking a very, and I see people, they start taking it once and it depletes your serotonin. You take yep. it again and Great. it just, it deadens the soul. It doesn't have the same effect. Yep. There's not that love and that, that, that beauty. It literally deadens people over time and it numbs them. And it's just totally, totally demonic, but that's the rave scene. I know, ex I know exactly what you're talking about. Keep going, bro. This is so good. Yeah. So we, I mean, in 2014, we were out there in uh, Denver at the Cannabis Cup, right? When this stuff was mm -hmm. getting popular. So that scene moves in and I'm, I'm selling to these different hippie type of guys who are talking about all these different drugs and, you know, we're doing ketamine and whatever, you know, whatever, you name it. And that, you know, I was never like a, oh, crack cocaine or anything like that. I knew, you yeah. know, as a kid, you're raised, you're like, that's not the stuff, but you start to, you start to dabble in these other I would say mystic type of drugs, there's yeah. different feelings and there's a different persona about them from the outside, from the image to where, okay, mushrooms, that's not that bad. That can actually help you versus, oh, crack cocaine, you're going to die. Yeah, like exactly, that's, yeah. that's suicide. But really there's not much difference. As you say, every drug, and this includes many pharmaceutical drugs, it will actually leave like this smudge, like this dirt over your spirit to where it's hard to receive spiritual things and you actually think that you're actually like getting closer in the spirit or like you're dabbling in the spirit when it's actually blocking you off and leaving you confused when it's all said and done you're just left confused like okay what was that i i must and then you gotta go back up. and then you gotta take it yeah. again to feel spiritual and get revelation yeah, you're like, well, I'm going to I maybe I didn't take enough. Maybe I didn't maybe I took too much. And you're you're going back and forth and really it leaves you in a pit of confusion and you don't really know anything. If you ask many of these people who take these drugs at festivals and stuff, they they're really confused in life. And I knew some they were even, you know, DMT and different things like that. And they're actually talking about really traumatic experiences happening and DMT rolled around. Right. And we're taking a little bit of LSD here and there and, you know, doing the micro dose thing for, oh, yeah. you know, for the benefits, right? Really, there's no benefits. I just <laughs> mental left, like, cognition and performance to get those and uh, that's neurotransmitters when, lifted. Oh my gosh. And that's when I noticed the relationship with, with my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, I noticed our relationship was absolutely terrible. And that was the main thing in my life where I, I held that really dear to my heart, you know, other than the marijuana, the idol, nothing comes in the way of the money and the weed and the, and the drugs and the influence and the popularity. Cause I'm, I'm climbing up uh, the devil's ladder, so to speak throughout all of this, that I'm staging my way up. I'm making continually more and more money and more and more influence. So, you know, the, the relationship there gets worse. So while well, these people are talking about crystals, they're talking about this. And it really came into, uh, conspiracy theories at that time began to get popular. It, we would just grab hold of whatever was popular, whatever was the <laughs> flavor of the month or the year or the couple. It's really a couple years. And the devil knows how to move different things in so you never get bored. Okay. He knows that you'll get bored. You'll end up looking some, some other direction. So he'll give you a new flavor, right? Even with marijuana, you, you want the new flavor. You want the new this, the new strain, mm -hmm. the new research chemical, uh, whatever the new thing is. So at this point, we're getting, we're just, we're willing to do whatever to feel spiritual, you know, because you, you get a little bit of an effect. Uh, we're taking a little bit of mushrooms, a little bit of LSD. And those were the two things we kind of mainly dabbled in yet. I would do some ketamine and uh, get all whacked out on that stuff. I don't, you never even know what happened. You know, you just come out of these experiences and it leaves you, you don't even know what happened. And it almost leaves you just confused. And it, there's really an influence that comes over to you that says, let me just do it again. Let me just uh, yeah. do some more. Let me just do this. Let me just do that. So taking then you these, end up when you got in from when you went from weed to more of the psychedelic, mm -hmm. more of the not just the mild hallucinogen, which weed is classified as, but the full on hallucinogens, that's mm -hmm. when sort of that atheistic 
scientific only must be proven mindset started open to whoa things are way more complex there is definitely a spiritual realm you started opening your consciousness you probably thought awakening your yep. consciousness you had some sort of spiritual awakening maybe you started to believe then you kind of it uh, these opened the door to the new age pretty much yeah so it was it all it all wraps on to uh <clears throat> one night uh, the power went out in the house and me and the wife were like, okay, let's take some LSD. You know, we got no power. We've got nothing. And we take some LSD. And it was that night she, that she broke it to me that she was like, I've been looking into these crazy conspiracies. It's true. It's real. The government's out to get us. We need to be awakened. We need to be woke. This is real. And she broke it on me. And it was like that night, there was a new age influence that came over both of us. And from that time forward, you know, we were woke and everyone is blind and we know what yeah, we're yeah. talking about. And it was all because we took that LSD that night and you could, you could feel something going on in the atmosphere. And it was like a helicopter landed, you know, you make up Literally all this demonic stuff. demonic spirit operating. Yes. It's literally these demonic spirits come over us that night and and make us feel like we just got it all figured out. Yep. And this pride of life comes on you and you're like, I finally figured it all out. That's what it literally felt like. Like my whole life came up until this moment and yep. now I know it all. A huge you false just revelation, a massive false revelation went on to identify you. You literally believe these things. This is who I am. Yet the source of it, the Bible says, as we know, Satan disguises as an angel of light. You open these doors, they come in. And now from this point forward, your life is literally going in a completely different direction based off of an entirely false premise. It's not even who you are, but you've been made to think that this is who you are and what you're meant to do by these spirits by this you know revelation that you had yeah so we grab hold of this like false revelation i like how you said that and this is now our life that you know for me mostly it wasn't like oh we're going to the next music festival but you got to understand i was dealing to the people that would do 50 hits of acid in their eyeball that would take a quarter sheet of acid at oh, and, you know at a rave and stuff like i'm not talking about oh we're just gonna microdose a little bit to figure something i'm talking about these dudes are spun out of their minds uh, and they're coming over and buying drugs so what do you mean of course i'm doing a little bit of it and bro i gotta ask that. you when mm -hmm. you were at that level of dealing because i was on the recipient end of that mm -hmm. i accidentally took a deca tab from a guy who is probably at a similar level of you in terms of tolerance, in terms of giving these things to people, you're taking that much, a deck of is not a lot. You don't take it much at all. You could potentially lose your mind. Crazy experience yep. will take a while to go into, but on your end, especially like where you are now, having to process the potential, because for me, I got a lot of other my friends into weed. I got them a lot of them into different things, yeah. LSD, psychedelics. I thought it was incredible. I thought it was amazing for the soul's journey but a lot of just guilt, a lot of sh like shame. And, and when I was repenting was like, man, the damage that I've done to so many souls, like in your case, what has it been like as you processed that with God, like just inter interject into your testimony right now. But I think that's so important because the whole reason, you know, our walk with God is through repentance and yours what you were in before, what the devil had you doing before. Some people get stuck in that shame. They get stuck in that guilt. They get stuck in these, yeah. these things. But to process through it, to know that you're dead to sin, you're alive in Christ now. Like Paul, he was murdering Christians. He was going after them. You might have caused great damage when you were a vessel. But as you've come to the Lord, what's it been like to your heart as you felt your transformation in that specific area of like, Man, so many people might have got messed up, but now I'm doing the complete opposite. If you can just make that succinct if possible. Yeah, let me just say this, and by no means uh, glorifying the devil or anything, because Jesus Christ, my gosh, he's amazing. All right, let's just say it like this. I was a mighty evangelist for the devil. 
I would take people that had no, they had never smoked weed. They had never drank. They had nothing. And next thing you know, a week later, they're selling ounces of marijuana out their home to got 20 customers. Like I would take somebody who I, I would literally be able to spot these people out and say, okay, this is their influence here because I'm growing in this and I can no longer deal with all these customers. So as I'm ranking up, I would find people and it's literally like a, an apostle in the kingdom of God that I was like an apostle for the kingdom of darkness that I would take somebody and be like, okay, now you're an evangelist. Now you're going to mm -hmm. have this congregation or this flock of people. And there's 20 over here. I've got five of them already here. Just take this stuff. It's better than drinking. Don't worry about it. Pay me later. That you was were always building me. I was people, literally like making disciples for your empire that Satan was building through you. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would get take into them like people's that. minds too, like on acid and these different things. The way that the spiritual pride works, the way that the witchcraft can get us to manipulate to have that structure developed. Like you have to be, you have to be pretty intelligent to build those people to get into that. Because instead of turning them to Christ. You're turning in the darkness and you, you know, unknowingly, and obviously there is free will. We, we did act in yep. sin in our, our previous lives, but like, what was that process like when you were literally turning people to the dark side? So my dad is, uh, I don't want to dishonor my parents at all, but, uh, I just want for the sake of the testimony, my dad was like a professional scam artist. He knew he was like a professional manipulator. So I had already grown up with this. We're talking about a guy who made $150,000 a year at his job, also made more money in the entrepreneurial side of things and would roll up to uh, a fast food place and tell them that they forgot this and this and this in his order yesterday and he wants it for free. And we would literally roll through fast food place and get everything wow. for free everywhere you'd go there's a chip in the windshield oh call the call this business say that a semi spit the rock up chip the wind all these different things throughout so i knew exactly how to operate in this to make wow. things go my way you know what i mean so i i could take somebody who knew nothing and and just build them into whatever i wanted them to to be very easily it was just an it was just a thing that i could do uh, that the devil kind of empowered me to do through pro generational curses, through experience and things like that. So it was it was very mm -hmm. easy to do that. And I would literally watch somebody who, you know, is playing video games and doesn't know any of this stuff. And in three in a month, they're a full blown slanging weed out their house. They've got a full business. And I'm thinking, well, it'll help them pay their bills. These, these, this, these are the things that demons will tell you as you're destroying people's lives is that, well, at least they'll be able to pay their bills. Now they'll have a little bit extra money. Well, they, they won't drink alcohol. And these demons would actually tell me, cause I would, I would always give it to them on the front. You know, I had so much stuff, so much money that I was like, Oh, here's $500 worth of stuff. Don't worry about it. Pay me later. You know? Cause at mm -hmm. that point, uh, I, I had influence and people feared me too. So it was like, Oh, if you don't pay that guy, things are going to come against me. Right. So I could just give them the stuff and say, pay me later, almost against their will. I'll be honest. Like they had no intention of doing that. I'm like, here, take this stuff. Uh, and they would just take it. So as I'm, as I'm growing with that, uh, you know, then it's the kind of new agey side of things. And then then we started to get into bigger business you know it then became popular to get things shipped in from california you know it gets legalized in california uh lots of stuff gets grown out there then they're shipping it over and we began to make products because the dispensary got popular uh, vape cartridges got popular, edibles got popular, all these different things got popular. So we, we just began to flow in it. That's where the money was being made. And that's where the need was really throughout the whole thing. It was whatever people needed, I'd be able to get it. I would get, I would grab hold of it, disperse it through people. Uh, but my buddy was the one actually getting the connections out in California, uh, dealing with the big money. 
and I was really the distribution guy. I would figure out this, all the different people, keep track of all that different stuff. So we began to get it shipped in. And that's when cannabis oil began to get popular. And that really opened up the market like dabs and stuff? Uh, largely. What was that? Like dabs, concentrates, things like that. Yes. So we okay. we were like we we were like pretty breaking edge on it, making it ourselves. Uh, very early on, probably about three years before it really became popular in the apartment with the butane, all that. And mm, you yeah. get the pipes, so you couldn't even really. Too. If you mess up, you can blow up a whole place. Oh, yeah. So we're, we're dabbling in that. And it's like, wow, you can. It, it totally opened up a lot of things, opened it up so, to where you could get a lot higher. And there was a, uh, you know, it was a lot uh more sought after you know so people would pay big money for it people really wanted to get connected with people that could get it or had it or could make it so we we start getting it shipped in after it gets popular i start to make marijuana edibles because i know there's a need for that and at this point this is what i this is what i'm telling myself in my mind well it can help cancer it can help these patients it can help that patient you know you're just you'll really make an excuse for whatever you want to do. And, and this will hit some of you home right here. You will even find a scripture in the Bible that, that makes you feel like you're validated in sin. So many people that I'm even, I even minister to now, they'll grab hold of like a verse in Genesis where it says, oh, every herb is for the people to eat, right? That's a popular line. Let me just say it like this, because by this time, I'm getting into like chemistry. Now I'm not a full out chemist. I'm not making, uh, you know, MDMA. I'm not whipping up molecules or nothing, but I'm like a marijuana chemist at this point, you know, cause we're making the oil. We're figuring all that out. When, even if let's say we grab hold of that verse, cause many of you are going to say that we grab hold of that verse in Genesis. Okay. Say that's the fact. If you eat marijuana straight up, there's no psychoactive effect. It's only when you put heat to marijuana that it becomes, it goes from THC to THCA active. And that's why yeah. you put a flame to it. That's why you heat it up. That's why you do all that. So, but you'll use that verse all day long to validate you as I was using different things to validate in my mind why I'm doing them. So, you know. At this point, I'm like, well, if I can help people out with cancer and use it in a medicinal form, praise God, let me just do that. Because at this point, I'm believing I'm Christian because I'm believing I'm Christian at this point uh, because I have said a prayer in front of a church. You know, you I've given my life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. I was bold enough to go up there. One person wow. out of the congregation so in the depths of this, you creating in this the depths empire. of this. You literally, it's, how did you even interpret that process of going up to the altar call? What did you, what decision in your heart were you making at that moment? The decision in my heart at that moment was, to be honest, I know God's real and I believe this Jesus thing. That's it. You know, I really thought in my mind, all you need to do is believe. That's what we teach people nowadays. All you need to do is believe and you're saved. You're good. Uh, you don't need to worry about it any longer. I did it a few times. So I thought, wow, I'm especially saved. I've got the Jesus insurance policy. You know, if I, if it's real, I've got it on the back burner. Don't worry about it. Really. It was under some pressure from my brother to go to church. So then you go to church and they're like, well, if anyone wants to give their life to Jesus, all you got to do is mm. come up here and pray a prayer. I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty bold. I, I don't mind. Let me go up there and pray this prayer. If it's real, whatever, something will happen. Did you if think not, maybe Jesus was even calling you into the weed industry to help people with cancer and things like that? To an extent, yes. You know, because at this point, I'm like a freedom fighter. You know, I'm contra... I'm counteracting the drugs. I seen yeah. the effect that pharmaceutical drugs had on society, that the different things had on society. So if 
I can push marijuana and keep yep. somebody from doing crack or doing heroin exactly, or keep them yeah. off the farm. I'm really fighting the pharmaceutical industry in my mind at this point that I'm like, I'm like head to head with the pharmaceutical company. We, yep. we don't like you. We're coming against you. If you use this marijuana, you won't need the pharmaceuticals. So I'm going that direction. And I think I'm like a freedom fighter and I'm, I'm very beneficial for society at this point. And, you know, it, it increased more and more. And, uh, at, yeah, so, like I said, at this for point, those who literally, for those who think that you can, any plants good to eat, eat a poisonous plant like hemlock and these other plants that if you eat them, you die. It destroys your digestive system. You die. How is every herb yielding seed, every green thing meant to be eaten? If when you eat it, you are literally killed physically. It's not true. It's not true in principle. It's not true in reality. It does not apply to weed either. There's certain drugs or certain things that might seem natural that are not ordained by God to take. And no man or woman anywhere in the Bible in any account has ever taken any drug to come closer to knowing God. These basic facts, I think, really just don't really appear to people fully. They kind of just say, hey, be sober. Drugs are bad. Drugs are evil. But if you're like you, yeah. if you're like me and you're like, dude, marijuana is way better than the opiate crisis that's going on. Marijuana mm -hmm. with CBD treating seizures with massive percentages and treating cancer patients. Yep. You have chemo yep. treatment, nausea, these different things. You feel like you're coming against evil, that you're like a light worker, that you're inventing these things. And from your side, even where you're getting into the chemistry, you're getting into almost the pharmaceutical biochem aspects of cannabis, which I was fascinated with as well. And in Boulder, Colorado, Denver, like one of the kind of meccas of people who are into this, they go out there and they would distill this stuff, refine it, you know, isolate cannabinoids, try to really do a lot of research on this. You feel like you're fighting the devil. I wasn't personally in the Christian worldview at that time, but for you, which is so interesting, you literally went to church and gave your life to Jesus, yet have this entire empire of drugs. You're still in psychedelics, I assume, dealing these things, oh, yeah. feeling like you're on the frontier, on the pinnacle of like human advancement and that you're bringing people into a greater state of consciousness because there had to be a thing that you were believing in your heart to actually bring people into this darkness. You weren't like, hey, I'm going to destroy this guy's life. You think you're breaking them out of their nine to five job, getting them a good income, maybe selling drugs that are illegal, but hey, the war on drugs is this Richard Nixon thing that's totally uh, evil in itself. Drugs should be legalized. Like the beliefs that we have about things are extremely important. If you never believed those things that were good about weed, you would have never been deluded into doing that. So what was it like coming out of those beliefs? Because you were that high up. There's that much money at stake too, which is a lot of people don't realize how hard that is for you to actually come to realize, hey, this is bad. You're saying, hey, I'm not going to be making this amount of money anymore because I believe it's bad. Some people don't even want to go there. They're working a job that's clearly unethical and they don't want to do anything about it because that means they're going to lose money. What was it like for you as you give your life to Christ? Now you're like, man, Maybe this stuff's not good. Maybe I need to stop doing this. Okay, so I seen the religious side of things and I knew, okay, there's nothing there. They're they're bored, they're hypocrites. I want nothing to do with them yet. I'll claim I'll I'm Christian, you know, I'm claiming it at this point. But then uh we gained major influence. We really uh me and my buddy, we've been doing this for a long time. We really blew up in influence. He was selling the vape cartridge. He was manufacturing the vape cartridges and I was manufacturing the marijuana edibles. And at this point, I mean, he's he's doing deals of 10,000 cartridges. If you don't know, that's like uh he's grossing maybe 50,000 at a sale, you know. And I'm selling the edibles by the thousands and uh at this point he's like my only business. I have like three people that I'm distributing to. So at this point, it's as safe as it's ever been for me. And me in my mind, I'm like this is as safe as it's ever been for me. I'm manufacturing them in my basement. I got a couple friends working for me. I'm making about 300000 a year. My buddy's making about a million dollars a year. And we did this for, you know, a year and a half, couple years. 
and then I get drugged at the bar. Now I didn't never really went to the bar, but I I went to the bar that night. The guy who I was there with had owed me three thousand dollars or something. I'm in a town of eight hundred people. I'm just going to the bar, have a couple drinks. Now while I'm there, I had this crazy dream about a couple that like had kidnapped me in their house a couple months earlier and I knew what town I was in and I went to the bar I had a couple drinks I go I I slap some money on the table I say I'm gonna go to the bathroom I'm coming back uh give me the drink when I come out I drink this drink about halfway and I feel like somebody drugged my drink I could drink you know what I mean being messed up was nothing new to me so I knew that something was goofed up, something was majorly wrong, and I had drank about half the drink. I feel like somebody drugged my drink. At this point, another friend that I have comes in and says, we were just hunting in this town, and it was a very small town. It was the same town that I had this uh, demonic dream at, and he's like, we are just hunting in Sparlin. And when I heard that word, something, a light bulb went off in my mind and I knew I had to get out of there. I had to go home. Uh, I luckily praise God. It was a couple minutes drive back to the house. I get to the house. I almost fall off the balcony. The wife said I almost stopped breathing for 10 hours. I didn't know anything that happened. I still don't know if it was a spiritual encounter, but I feel like I got drugged. There was actually drugs going around at the time. People were dying and stumbling and doing different weird things. But who knows if he was trying to blackmail me to get money out of me and certain things like that that they do in like the Hollywood industry. And uh, so that happens to me. And I remember this word that my brother gave me a few weeks before. He said that the enemy is going to come after you. Now, at that point, I, I don't know anything spiritual even. You know, I'm claiming to be Christian. I'm dabbling in New Age, all that different stuff. I still don't really know anything spiritual about the enemy. So he says the enemy is going to come after you. I'm thinking it's the police. I'm like, I'm watching my back. Are the police going to raid us? Different things like that. And uh, I woke up from that and I realized, I remember what my brother said. The prophecy that he gave me, the enemy is going to come after you. A simple text. Haven't heard from him in months. He's off in Africa. Simple text. The enemy is going to come after you. And I wake up that morning and I knew that there was a spiritual power out there that was trying to kill me. So at that point, I knew there's something after me. There's something going to kill me, trying to kill me. And we knew enough conspiracy at that time to know that there was like spiritual darkness behind Hollywood and the different agendas and the systems and the governments. So I, I at that point, I was like, the devil is real and he's trying to kill me mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason. I don't know. And calling myself a Christian and at the bar and doing all this stuff, light bulb goes off and I'm like, I'm just putting a target on my back. I need to change my life or I'm going to die. Now, God just gave me all that very quickly after I woke up. The supernatural mercy of God right there. And it just came on and I knew there's something trying to kill me. I need to change my life from that point on. Uh, nobody needed to tell me anything that I knew I needed to study the word to make sure that this was actually from God, that the word of God, the Bible is actually the word of God, because if I'm going to live this out, then yeah. I need to know the Bible is legit. You know, yeah. I'm like, I don't know where to go to, you know, this, the scientist, you know, the, okay, let's, let's look into this. Let's see if this is real. So I started to dabble in that for about six months. I researched that nonstop, realized it was illegal, the dark ages for a thousand years. That's, there's spiritual powers out there trying to stop people from getting the word of God that this is real, that there's yeah. something very powerful about the word of God. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at that point, uh, it was like all this money, all this influence. But at that point, I didn't stop either. So all this happens. I'm not stopping because I'm making too much money, too much influence. I got too much. And my wife still has to tell me that, I mean, here I am casting demons out of people. I'm still manufacturing marijuana products and I'm casting demons out of people. I don't even know what's going on. 
So I watched a few videos, John Ramirez, Isaiah on the podcast, because we're, my wife, I come home, she's like, here it is, here's what it is. John Ramirez is on the TV talking about all the devil schemes and plots, and we're like, this is what we've been looking for. There is something real here. I just we just can't grab hold of it. This maybe it's not a hundred percent, but there's some truth here. And I I eventually had to break down, and this is where many of you at are in your life. Uh, you need to break down and you need to pray a prayer in faith and realize that there's no person that can give you the revelation. There's no show that can give you the revelation. That you need to go straight to God yourself through the blood of Jesus and, and pray a prayer and say, God, if you're real, I need you to show it to me. I need you to make it perfectly clear to me because if it is, I want to live it out a hundred percent in my life. That's where I had to get to, you know, I had to sit down and I had to, after watching all this and it's just, it's just wild at this, it's turbulent. And I'm like, God, if you're real here, my brother's coming home from Africa for a month and we're manufacturing marijuana product. I'm telling him that marijuana is the tree of life at this point. Right. <laughs> I'm like marijuana, it's the tree of life. Uh, you know, it's just turbulent at this time. And this is after that. And I'm studying the Bible and I'm like, but I'm still not ready to give up the marijuana. That was like the last thing I was grabbing. I'll give up everything. I'll burn wow. the money. You know, it's still just sitting there to the point where uh, the wife had to tell me, she's like, it's been sitting there for uh, like two months. You haven't smoked anything in two months and it's just sitting up there. What are you doing with that? Uh, you know, I'm growing weed in the basement. I got it one night. I just was like, I got to get rid of this stuff. What am I doing? You know? Wow. So I'm, I rip out everything, throw, you know, throw Praise like $3,000. It was about $3,000 worth of product in the trash can, send it out, get it out of here. For his and, God. uh, yeah. Praise God from that time forward. Uh, you know, gave that all up. God, uh, by a supernatural grace and power, totally made everything new, totally refreshed it. It was because I made the decision that God, if you show me that you're tangible, you're real, that demons are real, angels, this supernatural realm, I want to know about the supernatural so bad. If you can show me this is real, I'll give it all 100%. And there I prayed for my wife. I had the open door. I prayed for my wife, never prayed out loud, never read the Bible a day in my life, Not didn't know a single verse besides Mark 16, 17, this crazy guy on YouTube's talking about. I go to pray for my wife. The power of God hits her. She ends up on the living room floor, manifesting demons, pouring out sweat locked up in like a panic attack type shit. and i'm like i don't even know what to say i don't even know if i was telling the demons to leave or not boom demons are just leaving her the power of god moves strong and i realized this is all right. real that there is real evidence for god for the name of jesus for the blood yep. of jesus and he miraculously changed me just like that there was no <laughs> There was nothing needed, you know, there was no extra thing needed besides my heart. He said, if you got a heart for me, make yourself available. I will change you. I'll do the rest. So from that time forward, uh, you know, was just started casting out demons out of anything that would move. You know what I mean? So good. Like, there's a fly out how, here. There's a fly over here. Your faith your fire knowing that the bible is legit it's not some fairy tale it's not some religious book meant to enslave the masses lower their consciousness whatever shenanigans might be believed at that time and many people honestly believe you see the living christ and his power casting out these entities out of your wife because for me i needed to mm -hmm. see literal demons literal. coming out of people to realize Jesus is real and Jesus is Lord. He is the one. Everyone who's on the army of light is getting their orders from him. And like seeing an actual demon inside of a person, because many people think like, oh, you're just believing in Christianity because you're deep in these drugs. Things are going bad emotionally. You're in upheaval. You're kind of lost and you find Christianity to have a sense of certainty, to have a sense of emotional security, to have a sense of like, you know, uh, that I've been found, that it's all placebo effect. But here are these yep. literal demons. Where do they come from? What what dimension? What, what Where, where yep. are these demons coming from? Are literally in your wife and you're casting them out and they're responding to you because of your belief in Jesus, because of your faith in Jesus. 
And that experience has fueled so much of your faith, preaching the word, preaching at church, preaching online, setting people free now, not bringing them into darkness, bringing them into the whole, you know, tree of life, marijuana, it's the key. No, the, tr the, the, the fountain of life, the fountain of living water is Jesus Christ. You go to him, you spend time going to him instead of smoking weed. You spend time literally praying in the spirit with your friends instead of smoking drugs that bring demonic spirits to you. Your life will be an entirely different life filled with so much love, peace, light, security, confidence, everything you could ever want literally by seeking Jesus because the Bible says we're complete in him. But what I love about your story is not only is it so similar to what I've gone what through I've in my gone. journey in terms of belief system, atheistic, scientific only, oh, the spiritual realm's real by taking these drugs. And bro, I met people who literally were devout believers in Christ, filled with the faith. They take mushrooms one time and they realize everything in their hopes. They realize they're actually a soul from a different planet that they've come to raise the consciousness. All the new age doctrine instilled into them through one trip on mushrooms. Now I've got a video that I talk about this. It's actually modern day sorcery, pharmakia. It doesn't mean, you know, all pharmacies are demonic. The, the, the word has evolved over time, although big pharma is highly demonic and filled with a lot of greed. But sorcery opens doors to these demons. The reason why people are going into these experiences like we've had is because the doors get opened through taking it. And for people who literally wanting to know God, wanting to actually know who the creator is, to know who the light is, the source of all creation. They think these drugs are the gateway. They're literally never the gateway. They're never the gateway. The only times they've been a gateway is for deities of pagan religions, fallen angels, entities to come in contact with. Any time throughout history, the Israelite, their surrounding nations were taking drugs, taking cannabis, summoning and, and going to these demons, Ashtera, uh, Asherim, Baal, the Hindus, one of the five sacred plants is marijuana. What do you have to say, given your experience and coming out of it, to people, because I know people right now, specifically who think that weed or think that maybe some of these other things can be used therapeutically, which I'm not 100% against any medical application of right. natural plants or the experimentation with it, I'm against any spiritual or recreational use for sure. M medicinal, who knows? Maybe penicillin could come from one of these things. Penicillin has saved millions of lives. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't go that far, but that's not why people are taking this stuff. That's not why people are believing it. They believe that it's spiritually good, recreationally good, and the medicinal is many times just a fat excuse. Oh, I'm taking this medicine, just smoking a blunt or getting deeper into their addiction with this excuse. But what do you have to say to people who are believers? They're Christians. They, they're wanting to follow Christ. And they think that weed is this tree of life, that weed is this beneficial thing. What do you have to say to those people? What I have seen was these are the same people that if you ask them what they believe, or you, you, they'll come to you one day and they'll be repentant about it. And then next week they're doing it again. Mm. Or they're grabbing hold of different verses. And next thing you know, they're talking about Bob Larley one week. Then they're talking about Buddha the next week. Then you're talking about over here. And let me tell you what, anyone who's unstable in their ways like that, you have no idea what's going on. So many of you are under, you can hear me talking right now. Hear me loud and clear. You've got no idea what you believe. Now I want you to look to the Christian faith and the longevity and the stability in it. There, there are core foundational doctrines no man has swayed upon that me and Everett have believed from the day we were born again that there is no there's no other way to heaven, there's no other truth more than this, and we have believed that, and we've been stable and foundational in those things. Now, many of those people out there that you're smoking weed right now, you think it's fine. You're let me tell you, you could make a million different excuses for it, but you know it isn't right. That you have a conscious in there and you know that it's not right that you're doing it. Period. Now, Paul says anything that's searing your conscience is sin. 
So you even sweat if you you're even swaying and thinking one day, maybe you don't want to do it. Maybe you want to do it. And let me just say it like this. Smoking marijuana, I've never seen it be beneficial for anyone outside of medical purposes. I've never seen it beneficial for anyone to the extent of me and Everett, Everett and I, we stopped smoking before we got saved for periods of time. That you even in your mind, you're like, I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to stop doing this. And you've told yourself over and over that you are going to stop doing this, yet you always go back to it. Now, I don't know about you. There hasn't been a day since I've been reborn where I'm like, I'm, I, I'm making a conscious choice. I don't want to do this anymore. I've made a conscious choice that I want to do this for the rest of my life and for the rest of my eternity period, hands down. There's nothing that's going to change my mind. I don't care what you got going on. I don't care how, how much of whatever you show me. This is it, period. So you can't tell me that this is the right choice for you, that this is what you got going on. But still, you're confused. You're left and you don't know what's going on. You 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 make a choice one day to do this, a choice that way. Let me tell you, you don't have to smoke weed anymore if you don't want to, that there is freedom in Jesus name. Now for me personally, I would have never quit on my own terms. I've tried to quit on my own terms, uh, probably a hundred different times. And you always get wrapped up in it a little bit here, a little bit there. Even when you do, you always seem to go back to your old vomit. And there's only really one way to break it. And that's when you break a contract with the devil. That's how you know it's demonic because people want to get out of it, yet they can't until they break that contract with the devil. It shows our, it shows our need in this hour for deliverance because I see these people, they come into the kingdom. They don't get set free right away. They want freedom. They come in, you you in your heart and in your mind, you come up, you want freedom. And if you don't get freedom quickly, you go back to the teachings of Bob Marley. You go back to the teachings of Buddha. You go back to the Hindu style of religion because you didn't get your healing and you didn't get set free right away and you didn't get the instant gratification. I'm, I'm going to tell you why. It's because you never made a true 100% decision to follow Jesus in the first place. It was just going to be another God for you. It was just going to be another add-on to the buffet. Jesus is not willing because you can have Buddha and Muhammad and they don't mind it. But I'll tell you what. Jesus is not going to put up with you having 10 other lovers. And if you want to be set free, you need to make a 100% decision to follow Jesus, period, that there will be no other gods, no other ways of thinking, no other ways into heaven. He's not just something you can add on to all this, you know, and I believe that's where many people are at. They're, you know, grabbing hold of the scripture in Exodus where he's making the anointing oil that has nothing to do with cannabis. Yeah, and it literally. just shows the, how hard the devil has worked over time to try and use scripture like he did with Jesus in the wilderness. He's been doing it and he'll continue to do it until the last second. And you yeah. have been making the same excuses in your mind. On why not to stop doing it, why it's okay, why how to try just fine. Now I, in my life now, I don't have to justify my actions with a Bible verse all the time. The reason you're trying to find a Bible verse, you're searching the Bible violently to find find something that'll justify you, is because you're not justified by the blood of Jesus. Let me say that again. If you're looking for something to be justified besides the blood of Jesus. That's the evidence you're truly not rocking with Jesus in the first place. Because I don't need to look and search and try to find something that justifies me in my own eyes. I have the blood of Jesus. And even when we stumble, if we sin, we've got the blood of Jesus that's covered us. It clears our conscience. We don't have to do it. And let me say, if you've been going back and forth, because I know this happens. You've been going back and forth. Do not let the devil shame you. Don't let them put guilt on you. Don't let them, don't ever think that, well, I can't be saved. And the devil is using the scripture. It's impossible for those to come back into repentance. Don't allow that to stop you. Because that's, that's what I see happening is there's people, they bounce back and forth. 
And then they just feel like, well, I'm just going to stay over here. I've tried it 10 times, but I'm here to tell you, you didn't really try it because I can tell you when you make that 100% decision, Jesus will set you free. I smoked every day for 15 years. I smoked the 100% diamonds, uh, hash, rosin, nonstop, all day long, me and my wife. And I'll tell you what, when we made that decision to follow Jesus, it was 100%. It was very quick. I'm not shaming anyone who doesn't do, you know, doesn't get set free 100%. But Jesus is faithful, even when we're not faithful. So do not think that you can't come back to the Lord or you can't Amen. come back to Jesus. Amen. Guys, I'm going to tell you what. It's only a matter of time. If you think that it's just smoking weed that you're dealing with, you're not. You're wrestling with demonic powers, and it's only a matter of time before they fragment your mind enough to get you to do all types of weird stuff you never thought you'd do. Now, marijuana was the gateway for me personally to do all the things that I never thought that I would do. You, you yeah. just smoke a little bit of weed. You're talking like you didn't want to talk. You're doing the things, your character, your identity, everything's fragmented up. And that's what he wants to do. And that's why you've seen a move where cigarettes were legal. And when we figured out that cigarettes weren't good for you, he'll always, the devil always comes in with a substitute. Let's give them marijuana. It's a little bit better for them. They won't see this one coming. 30 years down the line, we will know the repercussions of marijuana the same way we did cigarettes. And then they'll move on to what? Mushrooms. And yeah. you already see it in Colorado. Well, marijuana, they're, they're, it's not really helping anyone. They're, you're poor now because of it. You spent all your money on it. There's literally a poverty spirit that rolls with marijuana to keep you broke, to keep you lowly, demonically lowly in society. And I see it plaguing so many people. You've got no money because of it. You, your girlfriend broke up with you because of it. Your boyfriend broke up with you. It, there's nothing good that comes from it. I look back on it and I can't think I of one good thing that came from it. And you wonder, really? why was I doing that? I'll tell you what. Go a week without it. You'll look back and you'll wonder, why was I doing that? Exactly. And so many times people who get into it in high school or things like that, you think about the fun you had prior with your friends as a kid and blah, blah, blah. Right when drugs, weed, alcohol get into the picture, it's like, no, 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 we don't want to be around any parents now. We don't want to be around. We got to be secretive. The fun literally goes down massively, I noticed. I started in sophomore year of, of, of high school. First time ever leaving sobriety was through weed. And like you, I was never as much into alcohol it's not even more fun. It's not even better for your life, literally in any way, like you said, yet these small excuses keep you doing it. These small excuses that you don't cast out, that you don't take captive to the obedience of Christ, where you don't actually study the word of God with a true desire to know the truth. You know, like you were mentioning about people who like are kind of trying to use God just as like a, a tool to get healed instead of following God, to follow God, to be holy, to be righteous, to repent of their sin, not just so they can get something, but they can do something for God. It's that selfless love. It's that surrender and sacrifice. It's a very different mindset. Yet the new age, the self-help, it's all about using some formula to get something for yourself. That's not the case with Christ. It's surrendering yourself, dying to self to live for him everything flows from that even all the blessing and the health and the spiritual prosperity and these incredible things comes from that but you can't you can't go in thinking oh maybe i can you know kind of hack the system okay so i die to myself then i'll get it your heart can't be desiring that more than simply following christ repenting of your sin and believing in him for the salvation of your soul it's that it's that basic and I want you to, to, if you can, pray for those who are in similar things that you were just mentioning right now. After watching this, to get this far is only a miracle. And clearly, if you're watching this right now and you're in this and you want to stop, we believe God can deliver you powerfully right now. He can cast, these are, you're in a spiritual war. 
not just a physical dopamine response addiction, that's a small part of it, but I've seen demons ca cast out of people, zero withdrawals to cigarettes they've tried for 10 years. Sweating, aching every other time. The demon gets cast out, nothing, trash can, gone. Literally right before my eyes. That can happen to you right now. So Colton, if you could just pray for people, people's freedom from this addiction, from this bondage, they realize this is not what they want, they've tried stopping, but they just need a touch from the Lord. They need prayer. Yeah, let me just touch on one thing real quick before we pray. Let me say it like this, because there's still somebody you're listening and you're still not convinced. You think, I'm a believer. It doesn't matter. I'm saved. Let me just say it like this. You never one time, because this is what you say. You say that smoking marijuana and the smoke that goes up, it's like prayer. It's like the incense. And you use those scriptures. Let me tell it like, like this. You never one time smoked marijuana and then got on your knees and prayed. Not one time has that ever happened. So stop. You need to really address yourself. Let your pride down. Humble yourself and realize that you are in need of a level of help. And that's the whole reason you're smoking in the first place is because you need a level of help and you think that's going to satisfy. And let me just say, tell this testimony. I prayed one time for this heroin addict of, since he was 12, he was about 30. So 18 year heroin addict, a uh, deep in the heroin. And I prayed for him one time over Zoom. He stuck his head up with a big smile on his face after casting a demon out of him. And this is what he said. He says, I've never been this high. I've never been this high. And let me tell you, there's a phrase, there's no high like the most high, but in all reality, and I just want to be real right now, guys, what you're searching for, you're not finding it in the bottom and it, in the roach of a blunt or in the bottom of a bottle. You will only find it in Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you what, just because you're not seeing it at these religious churches doesn't mean the dead aren't being raised in other countries all around the world right now, that there are massive spiritual experiences that are awaiting you, but you need to go all in with Jesus. There's no 99% Christians. It's 100%. So as I say that, I want to pray for each and every person. I believe God is about to break and shatter change right now. And I want to encourage you, you might need to fall to your knees. You might need to throw something in the garbage right now. I know a guy who got set free because he flushed the weed down the toilet. They would come to the prophets in the Old Testament. They would tell him what to do, give him instruction. For some of you, you need to, before you receive this prayer, flush that stuff down the toilet. You need to hurry up and do it before the devil tricks you and lies to you. Flush that stuff away, throw it in the garbage in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice right now, everyone watching this. Lord, I pray the fire of God to fall on each and every one of them, begin to shatter and break every chain attachment, everything that's come into them from new age theologies and from drug addiction. Right now, we break every spirit of addiction. We command you to loose them in Jesus' name. Lord, right there, there it is. More, more, more in Jesus' name. Father, we just believe for every single chain to be broken broken loose, even the ones that you've come back and forth right now, we believe and we pray and we believe God that you are coming to Jesus tonight and there will be no turning back. There will be no grip of the enemy on your life right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, break and shatter every chain, addiction, every curse, every agreement, everything that you have made agreements with, some of you deep in the new age and the yoga and things that you have yoked your stuff, we shatter and break right now. It says the anointing shatters every yoke in Jesus' name. So right now, we release the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit to begin to break off the heavy yokes and burdens of this life that have tormented you, that have brought you down, that have depressed you. Every residue of drugs, every residue of uh, psychedelics, let it be broken and shattered right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you and we pray that you would anoint, that you would you have called and chosen these people out of the darkness and into the light, that there is a spiritual transfer going on right now, that you cut, are catching a revelation as I speak, that this is the way, the truth, the life, and his name. It's not a force out there, but it's a real person named Jesus Christ that died for me, that rose again from the dead. And now he sent the Holy Ghost power to baptize me right now. 
receive a fresh fire, fresh infilling of the Holy Ghost and be forever changed right now in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for everything that you're doing. Continue to prosper and increase every single one of them. And I speak it over you prophetically and I declare it. You will never smoke marijuana ever again. You will not think yes. about it. Yes. Every stronghold is coming down. You will yes. not dabble in it. You will never turn and go back to the old vomit in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing and in every person who's watching the life and what you just did right now, Lord, what you, who you just freed right now, Lord. Holy Spirit, we pray that you just Fill their room, fill their mind, fill their heart with everything that you are, everything that they're seeking, Lord. Fill it. Fill their quest for truth. Fill their their hunger for knowledge, their hunger for, for knowing what true reality is, Lord. Renew their mind quickly, right now. Supernaturally bring renewal to their mind. Renewal of how they see the world. Let your spirit take off the lenses that Satan has placed on, years developed over years, these beliefs, these ways of seeing the world, ways of seeing their parents, family, people in their life, we break it right now. Father, we pray that you bring complete truth to every area. Flood them with your truth right now. Flood them with your love, with your mercy, with your guidance, Lord, that they can know that you are, are the one that will lead them to the life that they're meant to live. We love you and we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, this was great, Colton. This was incredible. I've been wanting to have a conversation like this for a long time uh, for people to, to see because, you know, you go around and you see people in this and you're like, you don't have enough time to necessarily talk to them for like an hour, like kind of we talked about here to every single person you see in this because it's literally millions, but there needs to be people talking who actually come out and who can speak to somebody who is in it like, dude, this is not what you want to do. Trust me. And I just, I love how bold you are about it too, about literally how, how much you were used by Satan to do this stuff, to bring darkness into people's lives, you know, Obviously, you were thinking it was good to some extent, but we all sin, and that's why we repent, and we're cleansed, and we're forgiven. We're a new creation in Christ. You are a new creation in Christ. None of those things are held against us anymore. We've been washed clean of them, and no matter what anybody watching has done, no matter what you've done to somebody and got them in, in bad influence, you know, these different, the darkness that you brought into people's lives, you can be forgiven. Anyone can be forgiven by God. There's certain things you might have to do to, to make things right, but you can be forgiven by God no matter what it is. Amen. And these new age practices too, they're not what you think. If you want to read more about this, learn more about this, go to my YouTube channel, follow Colton. He's got a Facebook. I'll have his links in the description. Uh, he has a YouTube channel as well that he's growing. Go watch his preachings, watch his live streams, uh, hear more about his story. And is there anything else, Colton, that people can go to uh, to find more about your ministry? Uh, Facebook and YouTube right now. I just okay. got on TikTok and uh, Instagram and all that stuff, you know, because I wasn't on the social media. It was like taboo to sell drugs at that scale and be on social media. You were like yeah, an open yeah. target. <laughs> and even now it's like, you know, I just, just want to seek God. I'm just so grateful and so humbled by the grace of God, the tangible grace. Here I am shipping tubs, Walmart tubs of marijuana edibles on my house. Yet God is using me to cast out devils. You, you know what I mean? We're always like kind of taught or schooled that like you needed to be some special guy if God was going to use you. And that is so untrue. That is such a lie that God can use the dark people. God can take a salt and turn them into Paul. You know, it doesn't matter whatever you've been through. 
God just doesn't want you to get saved and go to church on Sunday morning, but he wants to radically change your life to instead of, you know, uh, whatever that, that idol of marijuana it becomes an idol because there's different aspects of it, so many different aspects, that that would be torn down and God would put himself in his worthy position and that your whole life would not just revolve around marijuana anymore. Oh, you wait till you get off and you got to smoke it. And you wake yeah. up, you got to smoke it before you go to bed, all that. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just so humbled, so honored. Thank Amen. you for having me on here. Of course, Praise man. God. Thanks for sharing your story and really being such a humble servant of the Lord now. And it's incredibly inspiring to watch your transformation and now your fire for the Lord. And I just pray God's blessing over your ministry. More souls are touched, more people are impacted by what he's doing through your life. So thanks so much for coming on, Colton. God bless you, brother. Yeah. And I'll even say this before I hop up. If you know the problem is a demon, because sometimes we give our life to the Lord 100%, and there are these demons that arise, they won't leave. You can uh, personal message me on Facebook, and I will get to you as quick as possible, and we get those critters out of you in Jesus' name. Amen, bro. So good. So good. Thanks, bro.